A few weeks ago, I explained how, as a new employee, you only have six months or 182 days to share your most creative ideas before you fall victim to corporate conformity. Tick tock. After 182 days, you'll start to act, think, and even look like others. You'll lose those exciting, bold, new ideas your company so desperately wants. So my teammate, Rachel Kraft, asked me a question. But what if I've been working with the company for longer than six months? <laughs> Am I hopeless? <sighs> Is there any way for me to, you know, get back to that bold idea machine I was when I first started? Okay, okay. Rachel's not the only one who asked this question. Kazoon <laughs> type. Oh, thanks. The short answer? Sure. Lots of people are past their 182 day limit. No, you're not hopeless. And yes, you can get back to the master innovator you once were. In fact, the best way to do that is easy. Just go on a field trip. A field trip? Yes, but not any field trip. Let me explain. <laughs> My allergies are killing me. Ugh. <sighs> okay, this is gonna be a lot better. Now, let's talk about conformity. Anytime you're with a company too long, you start to think, act, and look like the other employees. You start to say things like, that's not how it's done around here. Instead of making bold, industry-changing suggestions, you share safe ideas that result in only minor improvements. The same problem of conformity haunts companies who are trying to stand out amongst their competition. When you get too comfortable, your brand starts to sound and look like every other brand out there. Just look at these three websites for eyedrop brands. Looks like all you need is a photo of a woman with amazing eyes and you've got an eyedrop website. <laughs> Crazy. But what if you could innovate? What if you could get back to the bold, brave idea machine you were when you first walked through the doors? What if you could become a perpetual innovator? I first got this idea from a colleague named Carla Johnson, who wrote an excellent book called Rethink Innovation. Now, I'm not gonna share the entire framework because it's hers and it's awesome. So if you want the full story, go read her book. But I do wanna talk about one of the most intriguing ideas I learned from Carla. If you wanna be a perpetual innovator, go on a field trip. But not just any field trip, go on a bizarre, unexpected, even uncomfortable field trip. See what kind of wild and crazy and wonderful ideas you can generate when you become inspired by a completely different world. To see this in action, just look at this Japanese eyedrop brand. When other eyedrop labels were going to pharmaceutical conferences trying to convince doctors to recommend their products, Roto was thinking differently. Now, I can't say for sure that someone from their company went on an actual field trip to find their inspiration, but it's safe to say they decided to step way outside their regular world of eye doctors and drugstores when they ventured into this bizarre location. Where did Roto go? <laughs> It was a video game convention. Yes, that's right. I first stumbled across Roto Eyedrops when attending a video game convention. The main floor was crowded with booths advertising upcoming releases of the newest consoles and fancy controllers. Then, nestled in the corner with an extremely long line of eager visitors was Roto Eyedrops. They were hosting a staring contest with the eventual winner taking home $10,000. Whoa! Roto Eyedrops isn't afraid to step outside of their normal world and it's paying off. If you look at their earnings reports from the last two years, the company has grown their revenue by about 2,643 million um, yen. Uh, wait a second. That's more than $20 million. The perpetual innovators at Roto Eyedrops step way outside their comfort zone to find inspiration for their company. So now it's your turn. First, 
I want you to get outside your office, your industrial complex, even outside of your city. Go on a field trip and check out something that is the completely opposite of what you normally do with your company. I mean, make it weird, make it unusual, make it uncomfortable. You want something that is on the completely opposite side of your industry. Think geriatric healthcare and goth fashion. Wow. Or think UV light curing glue and barbecue. Great Scott. Or think marketing and, um, I don't know, podiatry. Attend an event, join a conference, buy tickets to a festival, or take your team to an exotic new destination. Your field trip needs to take you completely away from your regular work environment. Second, spend two or maybe three days immersed in this new experience. You should be approaching each day with the express purpose of observing new ideas and then connecting them back to your business. As Carla Johnson would say, connect the dots between what you see and what your business could do. And finally, aerate those ideas. Share those connections you've made with team members, partners, and friends, because really, you haven't truly had an idea until you've pitched the idea. No, I'm not talking about a formal pitch to a boss necessarily. I'm just saying that you need to verbalize your ideas so they can take on a life of their own. If you do these three steps, your bizarre and wonderful field trip can help you find new inspiration for innovation at any stage of your career. It'll help you get back to your Shoshin mind, your beginner's mind. And that, my friends, is one of the few Japanese words I actually know. All right, Rachel, did I answer your question? <laughs> well, she's already gone on her field trip. I'm heading out on mine. So I'll see you next week in my loyalty loop. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, man. Wow.